The countdown is on to collect our brand new Leopard 45 catamaran. In this week's episode, we go through some options that you might be faced with when buying a brand new boat. We share some tips and some tricks, having done this once before. Hello everyone, Ellie and John from the Barefoot Doctors back for another episode and this week, what are we going to do? Well look, it's very, very exciting because it is only six weeks until we get our new Leopard 45. Mm. Today what we're going to do is work through the options that you get with a Leopard 45 and discuss both how we made the decisions, what's important to us, how it affects you guys, but also some of the key points when you are looking to buy a new boat. There's a lot of things you really need to know what you're signing and what you're getting and what you're not getting. Yeah, and, and understand the options that you have. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you go into these things without the, the knowledge of what things cost to buy new, how, how long it takes to fit, can you get the products elsewhere. So I'll go through all of that and it's really important stuff when you're buying a new boat. When you go and view a boat at the boat shows, they will say the base price is blah, blah, blah. And then they'll say, and these are the options. It's very important when you are looking at the base price, what does that base price include? Because there's a great deal of variation between the different manufacturers. Some people have an absolutely spectacular base price, but they don't even include, say, the anchor winch or the anchors and things and essential sailing processes. So you really need to work out what is the price of this boat with all the gear on board that you want and, and it's probably that's a little bit of mathematics that you need to do mm. um, so get the when you go and view boats get the options list decide what you want and then compare the different brands with all those bits of equipment added the different manufacturers charge huge differences in the amounts for those different options for example you might buy the same thing from this brand as opposed to that brand and it could be a thousand or several thousand dollars more expensive so it is important to understand that the prices aren't the same from all the boat manufacturers. You've got to actually look at the, the additions at the price of the manufacturer that you're using to work out apples for apples comparison between brands. Mm. As a note, you know, it's a very exciting time, but it's also quite a daunting time because there's so many things that you have to take into consideration and lots of things can, can sort of be overlooked because of that whole emotional frenzy that you get buying this brand new boat. So mm -hmm. let's have a closer look. We'll go through the Leopard options list that we got with this boat. So obviously it starts off with the standard uh, base price. We obviously chose three cabins. So you've got to decide on the upholstery, colour that you want, which particular material you're going to use. Because this boat was a demo boat, Leopard had already made the decision to have a certain amount of gear on the boat. So there are some things on this option list that are already ticked before we had the choice to choose it or not choose it. But in fact, most of the stuff we pretty much agreed with, there were just one or two things which we wouldn't have got if it, if it had purely been up to us. And the first thing is the carpets. This is $3,400 for carpets through the boat. Now, carpets in a boat, are probably more useful for boats that you winter on because in the winter time the, the floors get cold. Um, but on most boats that are wet and in the summer, they get mouldy, they get hot, they gather sand. I, and it's added weight. And it's added weight. So I wouldn't normally take carpets in a boat. On the upside for this, this is a demo boat. So this is going to be in a five day show. There's going to be tra people trampling through the boat for those five days. The, the carpets are probably going to protect the floors on yeah. this boat. So in that regard, it's probably a good a good option. Full length mirrors in the three cabin layout. Yes, we did. Um, one of the options that a Leopard put in, which wasn't something that we chose, was the four peak childbirth in the port side. It includes mattress and removable door from bulkhead opening. So this is like a small area. And I think that they, they included in the demo boat so people can see what that option is. Mm. It's the really a real problem to use that area for storage, won't you? I'd say so. If you were a family that had small children or a baby or something like that, this would be the perfect scenario for you because 
it's very, very safe and you've got the baby with you, you've got your own space, but you've, the baby's also got its own space as well. And it can't yeah. fall out yeah. anyway. Yeah, so yeah. This, is, this would be great for them. It's a padded cell for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the Leopard 50, we actually did get the digital safe with the combination lock. We didn't get it in this boat, but $443, we'll probably get one ourselves later on. The interior saloon blinds are really important, both for sun protection and for privacy, so we got them too. Uh, saloon table convertible to coffee table. Yes, this is a really valuable because if you do have extra people on board, and especially with this boat, it's only three cabins, so if we do have four couples on board, the, the fourth couple can sleep in the saloon upstairs. So the next option is the engine room automated fire suppressor system. This is the system that goes off automatically in the engine compartments only. We're certainly going to go ahead and get a fire suppression system for the engines. Okay, then we go into nav navigation electronics. And this is pretty much the whole of this list is ticked. We have the marine stereo, we have external speakers up on the roof and, and in the front cockpit. And then we also obviously have the Ray Marine base pack with all the systems, the d digital display, the VHF, the Axiom 9. We've also upgraded the, uh, to the 12 inch display, which makes just the, vis the visibility of the display much easier. Can I just jump in here? One of the reasons we did that, even with the 50, is because when you're on a boat and you're out in the glare, it's really hard to see screens anyway. So the smaller the screen, the more difficult it is to see. And then, of course, when you're a little bit older, it makes it more difficult to see. So that's why we went for the 12 inch instead of the 9 inch. For ease of visibility. Yeah. But to upgrade the a 9 inch display to the 12 inch is $2,000. I mean, I must say, I did struggle with this a little bit the first time around. Um, because I think the, the, the 12 inch display doesn't cost as much as $2,000 and you've already paid for the 9 inch one. But that is just one of the issues you have to deal with when dealing with options. You could go with the 9 inch and then upgrade it later. If you're on a very, very tight budget, then there are ways you can save money through this process and do a lot of things yourself and don't get all these extra options added. So we've got a color radar as well, which is fitted. Um, the fish finder we're not interested in, we're not, we don't do that much fishing. We are not going with the rear view camera. This was the, one of the ones I think they want to have on the boat for the display, a forward facing rain marine camera. So have we got that? We've got that, yeah. yeah. And, and also the rain marine AIS, fitted AIS. So this costs $2,877. And one of, the, one of the issues which I think everybody needs to be aware of is all the boat manufacturers that I'm aware of charge a significant premium on the options that they add. So give, for example, this Raymarine AIS, it's costing close to $3,000. The device itself costs $1,000 and then obviously it has to be fitted. So what the companies are doing is they're charging obviously for the equipment plus the cost of fitting. Now, I happen to know this because I fitted this AIS on the Leopard 50 myself and it took me about two, two and a half hours having never done it before. So I was having to read the instruction manual. So it is not a particularly complicated process because it's all plug and play. But I guess it really comes down to what, what you want, whether you want the convenience of like basically a turnkey and off you go or you're looking at saving money along the way yeah. and if that's the case then there's as John said there's certain jobs that you can shave those those costs down a little bit yeah so if you're on a tight budget and you want to save money there are multiple areas here where you don't need to go with the options you can fit them later if you've got the skill yourself to do it then you can do it yourself or get prices from other providers or go to a country where the labor is cheap and get it done there. I mean, those are the options and you can save yourself an awful lot of money. While we're talking about making the decision, do you want to have the hassle later or do you want to have the boat ready to go? Because we're picking the boat up in May, we only have a six month um, season in, in the Mediterranean and it's going to take some, we get it in May, it'll probably take a month to sort out all the paperwork, get all the safety gear and all that. So we lose a month in that at that point so we're starting to lose our time for sailing so we want to get the boat completely finished and ready to go so we can go off maybe in two weeks but if we wanted to save money and get all this other work done at lower cost it would take us three months 
So we've made the decision, we're paying for the water maker from Leopard, we're paying for the AIS, we're getting it all done so it's all ready to go. In fact, we've also agreed with Leopard to buy a, a dinghy and, a, and an outboard, so we're getting that through them as well. So that makes the whole thing almost like a package ready to go. Um, the things we will have to get is our personal gear, like e and life jackets, safety lines and that sort of mm. stuff. So let's keep on going down through the options. Okay, electricals. Obviously, we're using 220 power because we're Australian and this boat's coming to Europe anyway. We are not getting shaver outlets. Um, the disadvantage of that, of course, is that you don't have a plug in the shower. It is very important to have those plugs. There's all sorts of things that, that, you, can, that you need to plug in in the bathroom. So just ask the woman of the house what she thinks before you make that decision. Inverter battery charger, obviously. Upgrade to three AGM batteries. We didn't link the starter batteries to the house batteries, $233, but there is a way that the Sterling system can link through to get um, power from your house batteries to your starter batteries. Ventilation fans we've gone for. Now, Genset, $35,000. Obviously, this is a big purchase. This is the same generator that we got with the Leopard 50. They're very reliable and they're very widely used. Maybe just share or our view on what's going to happen in the future as far as power and boats and even solar panels and things like that goes. Electrical developments are, are moving ahead so fast, my view is that generators of this type are going to become obsolete in the future. Um, you have, now can have DC charges that can put 10 kilowatts of power directly into lithium batteries so in one hour you can have 10 kilowatts of power absorbed by the lithium battery. So you can run your ordinary engine with one of these DC chargers for one hour and you do not need a generator. That's now with the improved aircon systems as well, that power can run aircon for eight to 12 or even longer hours. So you don't need to keep the engines running to run your aircon. And plus that's gonna eliminate some of the weight as well. Yeah, less weight, less cost. I mean, that's immediately saved $35,000. But you've also got, I don't know, 400 kilograms probably of weight in the, in the diesel generator. So less immediately maintenance. less maintenance, less spares, the whole, the whole shebang you are mm -hmm. saving in every way. So down the track, this is the way boats are going to go. Well, that's what we think anyway. Yeah. We haven't gone for that system yet. In fact, we haven't even gone for lithium on this boat. Yeah, so for us, the decision about the how much power to put on this boat, um, we're mainly going to be using it for two or three years, maybe four, we don't know exactly. But for us, we're going to be cruising the med and you know, power shouldn't be that much of an issue. We are having the air conditioning system. And we are also, we are using an electric winch in lieu of the standard uh, winch for the main sheet. So that obviously just makes it easier for, for all of us to, to handle. Mm. I'm having major deja vu, I don't know about you, but <laughs> it doesn't seem that long ago that we were doing this for the 50. And uh, I'm quite surprised there isn't a microwave. We didn't tip the microwave box. Um, we haven't got a microwave? I know. <laughs> We can't say, we'll just pop it in the microwave. Well, we'll buy one. I'm so interesting we missed that. Mm. Underwater lights, we haven't got those. They are $4,500. We didn't get them before either. We made a conscious decision on that because we really don't like any extra holes being drilled in the boat that don't need to be there. We both really love the lighting. You yeah, know, it's, you, it's spectacular. It's, it is, it's stunning. Yeah. So we opted for just buying a few little plug-in LED lights that you just drop over the side. $50. They work all right. Okay, um, pop-up lights in the coach roof lounge. Because it's a demonstration boat, they want to be able to show people the lights. And they are nice, actually. They do give really um, attractive light at night. They are very moody. Electric flushing toilets. Yes, we've got electric flushing toilets, so it's press button, fresh water option. Well, in a lot of other boats, people complain of like a really stinky odour in the toilets, and it's not what's been in the toilets, it's actually come from the sea, from the little bacteria. sea critters, bacteria and everything that are in the salt water. Within probably a week, mm. or certainly two weeks, if you didn't flush any of the toilets on the boat, 
and the toilet was really stinky and foul smelling. Mm. You then had to flush it out repeatedly for extended periods of time to get rid of the odour. I never had that much of a problem in Australia. You never so, had stinky um, water. I don't know if it's just in Florida or the Caribbean. But anyway, we've chosen fresh water uh, toilets um, and we'll see how it goes in the med. So let's talk about the watermaker. We did get the watermaker from Leopard again. This is the Spectra Newport 400, 17 gallons per hour, same as we got before. We were very happy with yeah, it, it worked good. wonderfully well. This is an expensive purchase, $27,000. And the, if you buy the equipment yourself, it'll probably cost about fourteen dollars or $15,000. Clearly the fitting of the um, watermaker and the installation is where the other money comes from. You may be able to save some money by doing it in aftermarket. So he, the guy that fitted our water maker, he actually took quite a significant amount of time in the day going through and then he checked and then he, you know, flushed and he... And, he, and he taught us how to... He was very, very good. So yeah. for me, the... JT Holden. Florida. Yeah, the investment was really good. Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, the other thing is, again, because we want to get the boat in the south of France and leave immediately, we do not want to have this hassle of taking weeks or months to have stuff fitted out. So we wanted to get it all ready to go, arrive and take delivery and just leave. Mm -hmm. Washer dryer. I was thinking, we haven't got a washer dryer. What? <laughs> do it, do it. But we do, it's there, it's there, it's okay, it's there. So $3,500, yeah, wash it dry. We've had this discussion before, very important, very, very important because it takes me so long to do the washing when actually, I do it manually. It doesn't actually, matter. when we've, we've been in a situation where we don't have our boat with the washing machine on and we've had to actually load it all up, take it from A to wherever the laundromat is, and it's the best part of half a day. You know, yeah, and, and that was with the car, so for comfort and convenience. convenience, it makes such a difference. You can just put it on underway and go about your business and yeah. still be you know, productive and doing things with yeah. your boat. You know? mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. We do love the, the washer oh, right <laughs> Okay, dishwasher, my goodness, we've got a dishwasher. We've got a dishwasher again. We have. Well, actually, that was, pretty, that was the standard. They wanted to put the dishwasher in for the display, so yeah. we really didn't have... <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was in the boat because it's a, a demo boat. Uh, deck wash, fitting and pump, dual and salt and fresh water. So that's the hose that comes out the um, hatches in the, in the bow of the boat. And you can flick it from seawater to fresh water if you want to wash with whichever one you choose to use. Stern shower, of course, um, that's included as well. There's no gas outlets in the, for a barbecue on the stern. Get like a little outside induction barbecue thing that. Um, Get through the. Yeah, we won't be hassled with the gas. With gas yeah. I suppose that's the other thing going forward is uh, boats are probably going to have less and less gas on board as well, as lithium and charging systems get so much better, uh, and the electrical systems improve to be able to provide effective power without using too much battery drainage, then gas is going to become obsolete, which is good because running around looking for gas fittings in different countries where the fittings are actually different sizes, it's, it has been a major pain in the backside mm. um, when you're travelling internationally. Yeah. The future is induction with solar and lithium batteries. Four burner hob in lieu of standard three burner, we've obviously got that, that must be because the, it's a demo boat, we extra $1,500. Well, I was quite fine with that. Yeah, because we sure do do a lot of cooking on board, yeah. you know. Um, we do. We do. We do. Okay, a refrigerator and aft cockpit. This was pretty handy um, just for storing drinks rather than having to go into your main food uh, storage area. We haven't gone for the ice maker. And the boat obviously comes standard with a fridge and a freezer inside. And they're fairly decent. Sizes, um, sizes yeah. so that was yeah. it was a bonus to have the the fridge out in the cockpit yeah mm. the exterior pack uh, this deck and hull that we're talking about the material colors for the boom cover and that sort of thing uh, there's no extra cost for that you just choose whether you want gray or blue we're going with the gray and the helmsman enclosures we do want to have enclosures but we'll get them done at a later date because we're still going to need some shade we have chosen aft cockpit 
a side and back shade curtain. It's the ones that leopard provide, right? The leopard, the yeah, they, they roll down, they're not completely sealed, and but they will give us some protection from the sun. Also give some protection when we're in um, a marina or a port because we, we, were, we had comments from last time before we had sort of curtains up and everything that, oh, I saw you dancing while you were cooking your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Obviously, after co I mean, cockpit cushions, yes, of course, we need them, so they're going to be provided. Um, it's $9,000, so all these things add up. Like, you think they're, they should be standard, but they do charge extra for a lot of this stuff. Uh, four deck lounging cushions, you know, we're not getting those. Helm seat cushion, yes, we're getting that. $700. Leather covered steering wheel, that was certainly not something we opted for. We just go for this plain stainless, but that's part of the choice from Leopard to show people at the show. It will be very nice though. Oh my goodness, we've got a teak half cockpit table. I know, that's because it came standard with the display boat. Yeah, the display boat. It's $5,000 for the teak. But I'm very happy with the teak. I will love the teak. You will. <laughs> I will love the teak. Um, and also the, uh, the teak decking, that's the plastic pretend mm. artificial teak. Mm. Um, so the, that the boat does come with that as well. Mm. Although that again is an extra $17,000. Mm -hmm. We did get that in the Leopard 52 and it does take away the glare and it does protect the, the surfaces of the fiberglass significantly. Okay, sails and rigging. We are, obviously we do want a bowsprit and we want a furler and we also are getting a code zero. So this can be sheeted inside or outside the stays. So it's just a bigger light weather sail. That is worth $5,000, but this is a gift from Leopard. They haven't charged us for that. That's very lovely. Uh, I know. They go, there was a few things added and they gave us a discount at the end. So we they are, have looked after us. They have. Choosing sales is actually quite difficult, really, because you've got code zeros, which are, um, can go upwind and downwind. Then you've got a code D, which is more of a downwind sail. If money is no object, obviously you can buy lots, but then you've got the extra weight. We have decided we're going for the code zero, which is, uh, can go upwind as well as go downwind. But we're also getting a parasailer, but it's a purely a downwind sail. Although these ones we're getting, they tell us we can go up to 90 degrees to the true wind. So that's very exciting. Because they, they don't have a, a pole, you don't have to flip them around to the other side like you do with an asymmetric spinnaker. The parasailer we have ordered and it'll be very exciting. We'll give that a go. Yeah. Square top mainsail with carver hook. So this is what we had on the Leopard 50 as well. So this gives us more power in the sail up at the top. Now that costs an extra $1,000, but we haven't gone for any of the other performance options. We've gone for straight Dacron sails and not gone for the, the high performance. Well, because we're sailing the Med, it's going to be cruisy. We're not in that much of a hurry. And obviously the Leopards are more of a comfort boat. So we know that it's only the boat will only go so fast. So even spending the extra money on the Dacron sails, on this, on this, is really only going to... Be an extra nod or two. Yeah. We didn't see the value in spending a lot of money putting racing sails on a cruising boat. We didn't think we'd get the value from it is properly the best way Yeah, I guess so. General equipment, uh, we, we have changed the 55 pound delta anchor to a 40 kilogram Rockner Rockner. with 70 meters of chain. But we'll also get another anchor so that we can have it as a... Stern anchor stern or anchor. secondary anchor, yeah. Mm. So the Fortress are aluminium, very light and nice and big, excellent for holding in sand. So that can be used as a second bow anchor or we can use it as a stern anchor. And we're getting 70 meters of chain. I do prefer 100 meters, but we thought in the mid we should be fine with 70 meters. Okay, it comes with standard fenders and lines. Transport documentation is all added. Obviously transport from Cape Town, freight delivery, $44,000 to get it from Cape Town to San Rafael. So if you want to save money, pick it up in Cape Town and sell it back yourself. So as we get to the bottom of the form, we see that the 40 kilogram Rockner with 70 meters of chain cost $3,730. But just above that, you can see that they have supplied for free two TVs, one for the main saloon and one for the cabin, which is very nice. If we now move down to the bottom line, the total of the base boat plus all of those options comes to $937,000.
but they have given us a 35,900 exceptional rebate because this is a demonstration boat, as well as the fact that our previous boat burned after such a short time. So we were really grateful that they were able to look after us and find us a boat to replace the loss of our 50-foot leopard. We're not doing the solar arch at the back, which was, was quite a lot of weight on the back. And the other thing we're not having is the dive platform, <laughs> which I really, really love. But this didn't come with a dive platform. It only The 50s come with a dive platform. So that it just means that that's an extra weight that's not going to be on the back there. Um, we'll have davits and we'll have the, the dinghy swinging off the davits, but um, it just means that hopefully it will perform a bit better having um, less weight. Very okay, so guys, this is the countdown for us, deja vu, we've got about six weeks to go until we collect our new 45, we're very excited, we want to get sailing again. Here in Morocco, buying lots of gear, the soft fittings for the boat, the coverings, the pillows, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and we're supporting the economy, <laughs> a lot, <laughs> and um, having a great time. Um, there's just great shopping here though, you know, the ability to buy clothing, summer gear to replace all the stuff that we lost in the fire plus uh, we need to obviously have cushions and coverings and pillows and all that sort of stuff for the boat and mm -hmm. so elizabeth is having a party 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 shopping 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 well, it's really good value too so um, yeah and that but, makes john happy when it's yeah really it is really good value and also these guys in morocco have been isolated for two years through covid and they're really quite bad financial so they do really appreciate the, the business. So guys, we hope you've liked this episode on the options. We'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening as we deal with all those other issues as you buy a new boat. So keep in touch and we'll see you in the next episode. See you guys. have liked this episode hit the like button subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode love and health from the barefoot doctors a classic cliche we're on the run this is what we waited for i'm the boss i'll do the clapping